first of all, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it, and I hope you're going to enjoy the next uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, we, as I said, so everyone who's just pinging along now and coming in, uh, we we are recording this, so just so you all know. Um, so. Uh, Basically, without further ado, I want to introduce you to a man who I adore. I think he's a wonderful person. Um, <laughs> Coach Michael Cummings. He's our headmaster trainer, educational ambassador. He's my partner in crime at Blazeball Academy. And he's an all-round intelligent human being most of the time. So uh, take it away, MC. All right. Thanks for the uh, warm introduction. Uh, stoked to see all of you here um if it gets a little um if it, if, if you, you if it sounds someone's banging on pots and pans we're in uh i'm in san diego and we're having an awesome storm right now so sometimes it hits the window pretty hard um just real quick background um on me i am a primarily a strength and conditioning coach but as simon said um I work on the blaze pod academy which is the education hub for blaze pod we work with a number of you on the call uh, that provide us with research and um, different information. We have a short time, so I'm not going to uh, cite any of the research and, and go into that. But this is all uh, evidence based uh, research that I'm going to share. Some of it's um, kind of neuroscience 101, just because we have people who uh, are neuroscientists on this and we have people who are personal trainers on here. Um, and so we want to kind of gear to the masses um so hope you enjoy uh this 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 quick presentation and then we'll get i'm going to show you a couple drills um that that we're going to do that's set up uh quaintly behind me so i'm just going to share a share my screen share this presentation hopefully it all goes right Simon, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the presentation version or are you seeing the other version? The other one. Gosh darn it. Technicalities. It's all right. I'll let you go. Don't worry about it. You, we won't fire you yet. I knew I, I knew I shouldn't have closed out of this thing. It was all set up before. All right, let me just slide this over. In the meantime, guys, if uh, anyone does have any questions or anything they want to ask, uh, please feel free to use the messages in the side here. Uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, and when we summarize, I'm sure MC will be able to answer any of the words or we didn't have any time for. All right. Five seconds here, now that I got it all dialed in. Boom, and... All right, what are you seeing now? Perfect, go ahead. Okay, cool. Since I can't see you, uh, we'll, we'll just go. Um, all right, cool. So, the, yeah, fire up your neurons. You, you know what that's all about. So just kind of like I said, Neuroscience 101, um, before we get into kind of the bulk of it, need to understand a couple of things. So neurons or nerve cells are electrically excitable information messengers. They're used uh, electrical impulses and chemical signals to transmit information between different areas of your brain and between the brain and the rest of the nervous system, which is everything that we're kind of trying to tap into. Uh, our brain contains about 85 million of these neurons and their primary function, the, the, they're, they're the primary functional unit of our nervous system. Um, this is what one looks like. These are uh, dendrites uh, and they are the area where the neurons receive most of their information. Um, there are receptors on the dendrites that pick up most of the information from the other neurons in the form of chemicals that we've all heard called neurotransmitters. Uh, the signals picked up by these dendrites, they cause electrical changes in the neuron itself, and then they're interpreted in an area of this neuron um, called the soma, 
or some, sometimes it's called the cell body. This is where the nucleus is located. And the nucleus is what houses uh, the DNA and all of the genetic material. So that soma takes the information and it stores it in the axon HELOC. Um, but if the signal from the dendrite is strong enough, and that's the important part here, if it's strong enough, it goes to the next level called the axon. Uh, at this point, the signal is called an action potential. And this action potential travels down the axon, which is covered with myelin. And myelin is basically the insulator material that keeps the signals from degrading. So a lot of uh, some of the patients that have uh, nervous disorders, that's the kind of demyelination of this area. And so they have a hard time receiving signals because the myelin starts to, starts to break down. The last step uh, for the action potential is the axon terminals or synaptic buttons, B-O-U-T-O-N-S. Uh, when the signal reaches the axon terminal, uh, it releases uh, these neurotransmitters. When our neurotransmitters release from the axon terminals, it interacts with the receptors of the dendrites or on the dendrites of the connected or adjacent neuron, and the process repeats over and over and over again. So that's kind of a cell, cell, cell biology 101 or cell anatomy 101. Um, and so now another component that I want to get into a little bit, because in our industries, we go back and forth on them. It's neural versus cognitive. Is it neural priming? Is it neural training? Uh, does neural consider the nervous system? What's cognitive? So I just wanted to kind of uh, define those a little bit more just for our, our educational purposes. So neural and neuroscientists, they focus on the brain structure and the regions, the anatomy that are activated when people perform various tasks. So those that use you know, PET, PET scanners, PET scanners, and different things to take a look at the brain. Um, they're they're looking at brain activity based on um, uh, yeah, brain activity based on physical activity and thought, and that's one of the, the a lot of the research is pulled from the neuro uh, neuroscientists, and then we have the the cognitive scientists, uh, and the and the cognitive focus is on it's usually cognitive uh, psychologists, and that's all about mind and behavior, and so in our world we've actually meshed the two, and we. You know, we refer to it kind of as the cognitive and neural system, um, and and there's uh, and that's what we're gonna use today. We we use these things very interchangeably, um, and I I th I think that's that's okay to do that. Um, when considering cognitive agility training, there are four focal points, and research tells us that a multimodal approach is the key to training these brain domains. So we have the executive functions, attention, or what I like to call focus. Um, and a lot of the times I'm gonna refer to the people we're working with as my athletes, because that's primarily my focus. But you can consider this general pop rehabilitation patient. You can consider this um, a client for personal training um, or uh, whatever, whoever you're working with, um, that, all of all of this pertains to that based on their goal right the goal of that person um memory and we won't get into a lot of a lot of the memory uh, attention there's so much there's various different ways that you can uh, abilities of this attention sustained attention divided attention things like that and memory we're talking about the uh the working memory uh, of the brain and then we have processing speed which is reaction time to the simu to the stimulus um processing that and and the response to it so i just want to explain executive functions a little bit because it may be something that you may or may not be super familiar with um executive functions or efs is a term used to describe the multi-component set of higher level cognitive skills that control and coordinate other cognitive abilities we refer to the executive functions as the ceo of the brain due to its organizing and regulatory nature Executive functions is a term for a family of mental abilities that a person needs when going on automatic. When relying on instinct and intuition is a bad idea. It's when you have to concentrate and pay attention and not do what comes naturally, but instead do what's needed at that moment. And this is a component of what's called inhibitory control, like not blurting out the first thing that comes into your mind, not jumping to a conclusion, uh, waiting before you act or not giving into bad decisions. It involves intentional control. 
like being able to focus despite distractions or noise, maybe from your environment um, or, or, or psychologically as well. Being able to organize the information in your mind so that you can see other connections that others didn't see. Some, in sports, we call this a high sport IQ, the ability for them to uh, solve problems in a new way. And the business world, they call that, you know, thinking outside the box. Uh, the executive functions involve uh, inhibitory control, working memory, and cognitive flexibility. And from those higher order executive functions, our clients or patients get higher degrees of problem solving, decision making, and reasoning and planning skills. And what I like to say is when you're able to train the body and the brain together, you're actually creating superhumans. Uh, and that's why we've seen so many records get broken. We've seen so many different advances because we are we are having advances in science um, and we're able to to piggyback on that research to to build products and training programs uh, that will help uh, enhance the lifestyle of, of these uh, of these humans to make them high performers. Um, a study that was done in 2015, which is one of my favorite studies, um, showed that all sports require the brain and the body to work together. Yeah, understanding that. And, and, and outstanding athletes, or a couple studies called them elite athletes, were shown to be able to make decisions and to extrapolate relevant information from the environment and to anticipate future events and outcomes faster than their their competitors are faster than what's called normal athletes normal humans um so they're able to see the stimulus process it and react and the important part of reaction because of the executive functions not only are they reacting faster but they're reacting correctly and that's what they've noticed in with all the elite athletes stimulus process quickly make the correct decision fast and a lot of times as you've seen people make a fast decision but it was a very it was a fast wrong decision and so that the accuracy becomes something that is is an important component of this so brain plasticity or neuroplasticity it this is the brain's ability to reorganize itself and create new connections with activity and mental experiences now we're constantly going through neuroplasticity throughout our entire life. But what's incredible, and you guys probably remember, it was thought that brain plasticity ended in our early childhood. Uh, I've heard that you know, after eight years old, uh, I learned at school, you, you, we stopped learning, or at age 30, we begin to degrade completely. And what we now know is that our brain is incredibly plastic throughout our entire lifetime. And this is the important part that we're capitalizing on when we do neuro rehabilitation or neural training with our athletes, patients, or clients. So this all works into kind of uh, maybe why some of you were yelling at me on, um, uh, on social media about me bashing coffee. That's not true, that's just the teaser. Um, it's true, caffeine's a stimulant that increases activity in our brain and enhances or upregulates our nervous system. But the question I have is, does it drive this brain plasticity? It might be a catalyst uh, to, to drive it, but, but caffeine alone isn't gonna create um, these neural networks and pathways uh, that we want, which is our ultimate goal for a high performance lifestyle. So here's me in the mornings and I don't do them on the mirror anymore. Um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe looking at myself with the bags under my eyes in the morning is not awesome. Uh, so I set them on these pod bases and I'll do probably five rounds with them and I'll go through some of the things that I do um, to help me drive brain plasticity. Um, now, I'll get into that a little bit because even though this is driving brain plasticity, my goal is basically just to upregulate my nervous system. I don't really have a, a, a task or a relevant task in mind, which is one of the most important driving factors in creating the neural networks aimed at a goal, right? Um, so uh, when we look at, um, uh, sorry, uh, other ways to, like drive brain plasticity to think about it in a, in a different way is, uh, and this is for every day, 
uh, is like brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand, um, changing the ways you do different activities. Uh, try using your cell phone with your non-dominant hand. Try driving to uh, work a different way. Try you know going down the stairs backwards, whatever. All these different variables that you can throw in um, we, we know that variability in training is important and variability in uh, everyday activities is also a really important um, way of driving the uh, increase in those neural networks. So according to the guided plasticity facilitation framework, and if you haven't seen that, it's really interesting. You can just Google it. Uh, the combination of physical and cognitive activities trained simultaneously has positive synergistic effects that exceed the pure addition of the positive effects of cognitive and physical exercises trained sequentially or on their own. The facilitation effect of physical and cognitive triggers the neurophysiological mechanisms which promote this neuroplasticity or the rewriting of the brain to enhance performance abilities. So, it's not, I can't just pick up my phone and, and do like a luminosity or do a brain teaser and then go work out because those are simultaneous or those are, sorry, those are um, sequential or, you know, I do one and then I do the other. You have to do them together. The science says you have to do them together. And it, in this image here, you can see you know, from an athlete, let's just say this is a not the left, the, the left image is a novice, uh, uh, basketball player who's you know learning how to dribble and having a hard time the more that individual can learn uh in this pathway how to dribble and the components of coordination and balance and rhythm and timing and tempo and all of these different things uh they're going to start to create these neural networks that will aid them towards their goal because not only those things i just said were very physical but they also have to understand um, the there's 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 uh, planning that goes into this. There's organization that goes into this. There's other things they have to consider when simply dribbling a basketball. Um, which, if you've seen someone who's never picked up a basketball and they do this two hand business, you start understanding or put someone on a ladder and see if they're you know they do this epsilateral thing, right knee forward, right arm forward. They don't understand contralateral movement yet. And as they do, as you can see, the image on the far right is like this really profound, robust neural network um, that we're trying to attain as, a, as, as coaches, therapists, practitioners, uh, trainers, whoever we are. Um, so uh, there's some things that, that are needed to create these networks. And I, I talked about a couple like, you know, brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand, et cetera because it has to be novel it has to be new the brain has to be constantly taking in something that it hasn't done before it needs to be multimodal so it has to have other components and, and elements and not just like a single task um and it needs to be sub maximal intensity if possible or in the neuroscience world uh they call it hot and hot basically means that you've added a timing feature to it or how many of this can you do in this amount of time and so you've created this sense of urgency and that sense of urgency is really what um is is a factor in in in, in creating these these networks um it needs to be goal mimicking or task relevant like i said if my goal to be an athlete is uh, one thing, I'm a, let's just say I'm a, a baseball player and I need to focus on hitting the ball better and I'm just doing, you know, my, my pod drill in the morning, there's not a lot of like task relevance to me setting up, you know, four pods in the exact same position. Like I said, the goal of that drill was just to get me up in the morning. Um, and then it needs to have the combination of the physical and the cognitive together. Um, so I found a, a, a hack, a neuro hack that allows us to really up level our performance gains. And that's with BlazePod. And that's why I'm, I'm here speaking today. Um, so why BlazePod? BlazePod has a, hundreds of preset drills in there. And you can do the drills themselves, or you can customize each one. 
And the customization feature is awesome because you can regress or progress or upgrade or downgrade the programming if it's too difficult. You can do that with tons of different uh, levers and the levers you can you know, turn on or off, uh, time, restoration, how many cycles. M with my iPhone, I don't know which one I have, but I can connect to 14 pods. And so I'm able to create really robust solutions uh, with this. Um, they're very durable, so I can you can use your hands or feet or even an implement. I throw med balls at them. Um, you can create your own drill, which is what probably a lot of us do all the time. You can benchmark uh, where you're at. And I'll tell you another hack that I do. Uh, a lot of times when working with a, a group of athletes, um, I've been a strength and conditioning coach for, shoot, working with people for you know 30 years, 10 years of personal trainer, nearly 20 years as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, and so what I like to do is I'm very observant. If someone comes in, you're like, Hey, how you feeling today? And they go, hey, you know, their shoulders are dropped. Legs are heavy, not, not really feeling it. Maybe they're lashing out at somebody. Uh, I know something's wrong. I don't know if they, you know, they got in a fight with their parents or they got bad grades or they got in trouble or there could be a lot of psychological stuff or they're just neurologically fatigued from you know, finals week or, or whatever that may be. Everyone deals with stuff in life. Um, if I notice that, what I'll do is I have, the, I have their test, um, a, a test, and I, I include them as a client, which you can do on the app too, include their profile um, uh, in the app. And I'll run them through a baseline test. Um, now that the reactive intelligence wall is like up, uh, that's probably going to be my new test. If they're really far off from what they did initially, I'll know to unload their program. So less volume, less load. So I use it as kind of a, a tuning fork, a fork or a barometer to know how to work with that individual. Because what I don't want to do is push them hard when their system is already at max, uh, the max capacity and they're about to crack. And so it's it's one of the one of the ways that um, I'm, it makes me a better coach uh, by being able to understand them and know when to unload that, uh, and that's part of the analytics that that go into it. Uh, the kind of the last thing that I love about BlazePod before we get I show you some things is it has five uh, light logics, and so you can think of like five ways that you can attack um, your athlete by building a, a programming. The first one is random. So the lights are gonna come on randomly. And there's uh, the ones I'm gonna do today, the moment I tap one, the other one goes on. And you can measure that reaction time, but that's a reaction time from tap to hit. The true reaction time comes when you put a, a random delay in there. So you can delay it from a half second to four seconds. The moment that light goes on and you move to it, 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 the clock starts as soon as the light goes on. And so I have a true uh, reaction time measurement. Um, and two studies that recently came out uh, showed they, they did independent tests on BlazePod and they've, de they've deemed them um, credible and valid measuring instruments, which is, is, is cool because now other people are using them for research um, and uh, I love it because I know that I'm getting uh, the real data. The second one is focus. This is works the kind of the executive function where you want, uh, where you can activate the inhibitory control. Other lights are going to go on, and I'm going to ignore those other lights and and uh, and just go towards my task. What I'm going to show you on the table isn't really task relevant because if I'm a soccer player, simply you know, hitting them on the table, that might fire up the nervous system, which we call neural priming, which a lot of Formula One drivers will use before they get in the car. Um, I would, I'd set up, you know, full sprint, and then one of the light goes on. If I'm asking them to attack green and pink goes on, do they go there or are they able to ignore that and go towards the, the green one? So that's, that's, that, uh, that's more task relevant when I talk about that. The third one is home base. I love home base because there's so much you can do with it. One pod acts as the home base and is basically the boss that tells everything else what to do. So I hit it and then, then whatever is going to happen happens. This one can go on. This one can go on. Whatever, whatever happens. But then I can rest and come back. So a lot of my sprint drills that have rest associated with it, 
I'll come back and it'll just hold until I hit that again. And then I can take off and go. Um, so home base is a really, really good one for including rest. Sequence is pre-programmed. I can direct my athlete where to go. I use blaze pods with the 5105 um, or the, the short shuttle. And so uh, they're going to go from this pod to this pod to this pod because I really want to see the time in between those. Um, and then all at once, all at once is another one that I, I won't show you today, but they all turn on and it's how quickly you can tap them out. And so I'll set up a wall with 14 of them because <laughs> I have them. And the athlete will fire those up as, uh, or tap those out as quickly as they can. And then there's a rest period. So I can set, I can set them um, cycles, however many of those cycles do I want them to do. And then the rest in between. And so if I want them to rest 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, um, which I love uh, when I do kind of like metabolic training for these guys. I really want to keep their heart rates up and give them minimal rest as they finish a session. Um, just something that I that I enjoy. Um, if you want to contact me, this is this is my information at Michael the Trainer, MC at the Consortium World. Happy to answer any questions for you. Uh, and so I'm going to now go off um, uh, presentation mode, and I'm going to show you some things, and then we can we can jump into some some questions or or whatever else here mc while you're doing that we have a question here from uh yeah. joaco and excuse me if i'm not pronouncing your name correctly what is the average time for a session of this type of exercises to get some benefits uh the the exercise i just i just spoke of i'm i'm pretty sure uh, what he's saying is is kind of yeah using exercises like you're talking about with blaze pod how long would they usually be to be able to start getting some benefits uh cognitively neurologically yeah so so it's more of a chronic thing i, I say i'm going to use chronic and acute so it's more of a duration thing than it is than it is acute it's not going there is some there is some um like uh activation potentiation um so there is some immediate crossover after doing them but for the neural network and the neural pathways, it 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 is it does take time. Um, nerve tissue grows grows very slow, but what happens in our brain um, doesn't uh, is a little, uh, moves moves a lot quicker because we're just we're just forming those pathways. I'll I'll research that. I'm sure there's there's some neuroscientists out there that or some researchers that probably know the answer to that better than me. But that's a that's a great question. I personally have seen um, 30 days where, and I, I do like 30, 60, 90. I'll do, in 30 days, I see a difference. In 60 days, I see like a, a real difference. And not that they're like can go pro in 90 days, but their ability to master certain things, especially with balance, coordination, footwork, that all happens within like, the first like 30 30 60 days um of training the one the one thing i'll i will um i, I want to say to you is that anything that's novel and new has neurological stress to it so if i if you know if if i just took an exam and then i went home and i did like really involved uh blaze pod tests or blaze pod drills that might be way too much for my neural system and i might have neurological fatigue and it's going to be going against me and so we really want to make sure that we're that we are using this as a as an assister for um uh the training and not a distractor where we're actually beating down their um their nervous systems uh, because again anything that's open skill and novel the brain has to learn that and you have to then allow enough rest and sleep to be able to input that to formulate those uh, the right pathways. Okay, should I uh, should should we play a little bit? All right. So I set these pods up here so you guys can see them, and I'll I'll talk I'll talk through it with you. So this is this is one of the things I love about it. This is how easy it is. Okay. So I go to my app, I open it up. I have these four on automatic, so it immediately just connected. 
I'm going to go create and save. The first one I'm going to do, because I'm want to. i going to write down the scores here because I want to show you a couple things. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, the random. I click on random. Stations one, pods four, players one. Colors, uh, we'll just go with blue because Simon loves blue. Um, and I'm going to go 30 seconds, okay? So the moment I hit it, I'm just basically, this is this is kind of whack-a-mole. Like, I, I ain't going to lie to you. This is whack-a-mole right here. But it's this is for what I do in the morning for neural priming so I don't have to drink my coffee. If you guys want to cheer him on, uh, you can do. Silently. This is where you learn something about yourself, too. Like, when I hear the countdown clock or someone, like, uh, says three seconds left, like, I start messing up. And so I can I can understand, like, how I like to be coached. So there's so many things that you can learn from it. Okay. So a couple of things that, that uh, you guys know if you have these. I had 60 hits, so I hit 60 pods. My average my average reaction time was a 371 uh, uh, milliseconds. So basically, 0. 0.371 seconds. So I'm just going to put 371 here. But what I really like to see is, uh, and I don't know if you guys can see it. Maybe I can show you. If you see these lines here, okay, that was that's my reaction time to each hit. See how it's a pretty uniform line? That means my reaction time, and I'm rather than it just being like a fast reaction time, I like to see where I had to think about something. So I'm going to exit out of this one, and I'm going to make this a little bit harder, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I am going to add another color to it. I'm going to go uh, blue and red. Blue, I already got that one, and sorry, I got giant fingers. Red, okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go multimodal a little bit, and I'm gonna say right hand red, left hand blue, okay? So now that's what that's what I'm gonna do here. Same drill, right hand red, left hand blue. Here I go. Set. Ah, that's a miss hit. So the clock gives that sense of urgency. And when I made a mistake, I started freaking out a little bit. So it's how how can I control myself when, when I've been freaking out? So 48 hits on that one, significantly less. Uh, 492 reaction time compared to 371 and then if I look at my if I look at my graph my graph actually looks pretty good but there's one two three four that I delayed on and you guys probably saw that when I shifted back that's that inhibitory control all right so now I'm gonna up it a little bit more um, and try to create um, something even a little bit more difficult using the same focus um, or same random logic. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another color. But in adding another color, and I'm going to add green, and subsequently these drills are already, even though I'm building them, they're already in your app preset. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right hand red, left hand blue, but I got to clap once for green. So I'm just, I'm building, right? Whew. Oh, you hear that storm behind me? It's going crazy. Come on, pick it up, pick it up. Ah, miss hit. I swear I've seen you go faster. Come on. Ah, ah. No, I'm freaking out. Come on. 
What do they say in the military? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's I got to calm down and get it done. So on that one, again, I mean, increased difficulty, 39 hits. Average reaction time, 626. And my graph is ugly. The, right in the middle is where I started doing okay. And then once I had that error, I went off, I went off the charts. Um, and so, so 60 to 48 to 39 hits, same, same 30 seconds. But what I did is I upped, I, cre I created something else. Now you can also, uh, add different things. You can add, you can ask questions to your clients as they're doing it. So even if they're just going through one, you can say, you know, uh, uh, when's your mom's birthday or, uh, the, the more hot the question, like the more uh, like intense the question, the more they're going to think about that. If you ask kind of a mundane question, then it's not going to bother them. You can also have them do addition, math, uh, things that they might have to calculate in their brain. All of these things are, are going to like create kind of that awareness. Um, but again, when, if this is going to translate not just to like general neural networks but a, but a network towards a goal to make me a better soccer player footballer athlete coordination balance i need to i need to have this associated with it. i need to be mimicking that so those are those are kind of the three that i do in the morning uh to really beat myself up i'll add another color and i'll have to um i hit the table uh i hit the table before i hit it with with one of the hands so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to focus now, the focus logic. So again, really easy. I just get out of that. I scroll over to focus, click on focus, um, four pods, next. Now, what, what focus is, is it's going to give me distracting lights, okay? Um, and so uh, I'm going to hit blue again. My distracting cover colors, shoot, I, I like uh, red and green. So I'm not going to hit red and green. And sorry, I need to put uh, one color, three dis two distracting colors, uh, red. Red and green. OK, so I'm hitting blue red and green distractors and i'm leaving one off because that could be a distraction as well so let's let's do the same thing and uh and see see how i do 30 seconds so what am i hitting? i'm hitting blue okay <laughs> I slowed down a little bit because in my brain, I was like, man, this really isn't doing anything because they're so darn close together. I should have spaced them out in a different way where I had to like, because I was just uh, kind of going through the, the motions on there. But as you saw, those are distractors. So physically, if I'm moving and I see something, I need to identify it as the correct stimulus. And if it's not, I need to ignore that. Um, just ran a, a, a combine for... Uh, Carrie Walsh and her uh, in, uh, beach volleyball and we put pods on the net and these girls as soon as they saw the distraction a lot of them who were kind of newbies they were running right towards that and then had to like abruptly move this was really great for decision making and really focusing on that target so that one I got 56 hits and reaction time 397 and so in my brain, I was like, this is very similar to the to the my random results just based on how this was set up. Um, but uh essentially that is um those are the the the, the two that I wanted to share with you today. Those are the ones that fire me up in the morning. Um and so if there's any any questions, happily uh happily answer them. Or if you guys want to make any comments or whatever.
Yeah, we have some uh, questions here. I think uh, if you can see the screen, Mike, um, I've answered a couple, but we have one here from uh, Giovanni from uh, Italia. Uh, hello, I'm a professional skeleton athlete, so my discipline is really demanding on how quick do I have to take correct decisions and react during my runs. First question, do you think that before the warm-up for a run, exercises with the blaze board can help on warming the neurological system? You can start with that one, and we'll ask the second one. Yeah, I see him now. Yeah, so Katie Humphreys is a good friend of mine. She does bobsled. She's the most winningest uh, bobsled world champion ever, and uh, she uses blaze spot all the time. Um, she uses them to make her faster. Um, it, she uses them for the same reason that um, uh, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he, before, before he went to the Super Bowl two years ago, we still remember this, he flew in, he was late, his flight was late, and he told his trainer, Jamal, he goes, I just want to do the lights. And so a lot of people don't use them like for task orientation or, or task relevance. Like he wasn't using it to catch the ball better. He wanted to prime his nervous system. He felt that it was making him faster, having to react that quickly. And that's what um that's what Kaylee Humphreys does. Um, and I would I would submit that that would be uh um, one of the, uh, that would, it, it would really, really benefit you and anybody that, um, that you're working with, with, with skeleton, bobsled, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, second, second part of that question as well, if you can see it, can you see it? Uh, away from the performance, uh, away, away from the performance. So during the training, how long does a blaze ball session have to be? And when during a day is best the time to train this aspect to reach peak performance? That's, that's interesting. Um, uh, <sighs> I don't know when the time of day is because you'd have to kind of look at like your total calendar and it depends on the drills you're doing. But primarily, if you're looking at if you're looking at uh, programming for something that is that is fast twitch, that's that's neurological, you're going to want to do this in the beginning of your session. So you can do your, uh, you know, your pillar activation, some of your correctives, your myofascial work, your dynamic warm up. This would this exists during uh, components of this exist during. Um, like this, the, the the neural activation phase right before you are gonna lift weights or do some sort of like mechanics or field work. Um, after your mechanics and field work, you can also use these uh, on the field after you have enough rest uh, as a way to train some reactive agility if you're if you're doing your sprints. But if you're using them just kind of the as neurological priming, you're gonna want to do it bef uh, like at the end of your at the end of your warm up right before you start going. Um, and then I'll use some of this more movement for my metabolic. I usually do metabolic training at the end to just kind of like uh, really fatigue them right before they directly go into um, recovery mode. Um, that's how that's how I, I use them. But I don't know the, the time of day or your training schedule, but um, we can we happy to talk about that with you later. Uh, please. Please do not try going down the stairs backwards. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Uh, what is the average time for a session of this type? Uh, to, oh, we already got that. Uh, we just preloaded. All those drills that I just did are pre are preloaded in there. Um, they have different. Uh, they have you have to filter kind of what it is. There's really cool filters, but if you just scroll through it, you can you'll be able to find uh, find those. We've tried to give them names that are associated with that. Um, Simon West, that one. Someone has a raised hand. Do you want to, uh, do you want to let? Yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to do that now. Uh, Thomas, I think you can now open your mic and, and ask your question. Maybe or not. Give Thomas can you a hear second. Me? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm a recovering, um, cancer patient that has strokes that's had three strokes and i'm trying to relearn how to walk what would you suggest utilizing the the system yeah so i mean i uh i can't make full-blown like recommendations i'm i'm not a uh physical therapist um in that space but uh there's 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 Anytime that you're going to stimulate your brain, you're going to have 
adaptational responses to it. Um, and so I know simply understanding, uh, reacting to something, you're going to start creating more neural pathways. But um, if you if you send us an email, um, I'd love to uh, get some more information for you. I don't I don't like talking about things I'm I'm not too sure of or that somebody better may um, be able to give you a good answer. Um, I know these are used a lot with uh, vestibular rehabilitation, uh, recreating balance, um, recreating stability. Uh, there's a group called Rocksteady Boxing that uses them uh, all the time for yeah Parkinson's. Somebody just said that, and and Alzheimer's. So they they are used. Um, I just don't have like the, the 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 protocols, and I'd hate to just spit out what I would do since I'm not certified through <laughs> through any medical board. Um, but happy to get that information because we work with a ton of people who who absolutely are. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, thank you, Thomas. I'm just going to move over now to Douglas. I know he has a question as well. Hang on a second. Douglas, bear with me. I will figure this one out. Here we go. Okay, Douglas, you can now unmute. Okay. Uh, is it better to do one session of 60 seconds, two sessions of 30 seconds each with, a say, a 30-second rest between? What what's the goal? Uh, general conditioning. Yeah, general general conditioning. You're gonna want less less rest because you start you can start tapping into like your mTOR hormones um, and uh, your your growth, your testosterone through maximal intensity movements. Um, so high intent high intensity with 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 lower rest periods in between um so i would i would i would do your oof, 60 seconds is long though <laughs> you don't want to be completely wiped but you also don't want to be completely recovered that's why the hit principle uh, high intensity interval training has has done so well uh, and created such you know f fit individuals is it's been it's been shown to um improve mTOR uh, production in the body which decreases body fat and it increases um, uh, lean muscle mass. And then kind of follow up to that, how many days a week do you normally recommend? And then how do you know if you're overdoing it? Thank you. Yeah, Douglas, it really depends on the drill. So me and my kids, uh, three days a week, we'll do, we, on a stormy day, we'll do stair sprints. And so we use home base, we put three pods, we sprint to whatever one goes on, and then we walk back to home base, tap it, and go again as quickly as possible. That one isn't really a reaction drill, right? That one's not going to fatigue uh, me mentally, is because I'm because it's more of a performance one. So these are these are triggers to to create excitement within um, like a timing system. That's what we're using that for. Like, how quickly did you get to that one? How quickly did you get to that one? But it's more, it's, it's, it's physical exhaustion, physical exercise. We're training our, our, our legs. The ones where you have distracting lights and a lot of stuff going on and you're moving, 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 you're, that's what we call kind of like an, an, an open skill or something that's hot. Um, and you're not going to want to do as many of those uh, just because it could cause this, this kind of this metabolic or this neurological fatigue. Um, but I would say, you know, uh, on, on average, if I'm working with one population, I'll probably do, and it depends, the all at once, I'll do one cycle of, of, of 10 to get them faster. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I, I'd play around with it a little bit and see if, uh, if it at some point gets too much. If I did that one I just did with the distracting lights more than five times in one session, like, um, that's going to be, that's going to be enough for me. I don't need to do any more of that drill. And then I can pick something else. And, uh, blaze pot has now come up with something called collections. And these are kind of like workouts. So it's, it's paired some together based on a goal. So now you can just go on there and like click on a collection. It'll pair like two, three, four of them with some rest. And you can take that and customize it if it's too easy, too easy or too hard. So they've really given us some great generalized um, uh, drills, and we're able to do kind of what we want with them to, 
for that goal. And and deadlifts they're great for for keeping you fit. And the reason why, and I always we always talk about this, like you you don't go half half hazard with these you want to get to that target as quickly as possible so i'll put a lot of general fitness clients or i do uh, presentations for personal trainers and they're moving i have older adult population that are moving to get there and so it really forces you to use uh maximal intensity or or sub you know sub maximal intensity which is the key to 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 dropping body fat and, and burning calories Thank you, Douglas. Um, we're going to move to one last question um, from Brent. Hang on a second. Okay, Brent, you can uh, unmute now. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Good. So I run a hockey training uh, program where the kids come in and do three activities. They shoot pucks at a net with a, a system. They do some stick handling on a different system and then they do a blaze pod workout just uh so there's three activities where would you put the blaze pod would you put it first would you put it last i always i always put it first just due to the fact that it up it up regulates the nervous system and that is what you want prior to performance is you want everything ticking and so okay. when we work we work with um a lot of our like we have combine guys right now for for the nfl combine and we'll do it as part of um so we'll do uh uh pillar prep so kind of you can look at that as like correctives and then dynamic warm-up um, or movement prep based on what we're going to do and then we'll do uh neural activation uh, and our neural activation is like fast feet, things that you're moving, moving. This is where I plug in um, the, the neural activation. Now, if if you're using it for, if the, are, are they on skates or, or, or is this dry land? Dry land. Okay, dry land training, yeah. So they can be set up with the feet, they can be set up. If you're running, again, if you're running to something and moving and there's a time delay in there, that's less stress. That's less cognitive stress because there's there's not the immediacy in there. It's more it's more physical, um, unless it's like you know if you're on a wall, if you're on a table, if it's right there, you're moving as quickly as possible. But if you have the guys out and you have distracting lights like on cones that are set like five yards away, and they have to bust out and get there, and then you know kind of come back, a little bit of rest. If maybe they're on a four second random delay, and then get out again and and hit that that's a little bit less stressful uh, for, for the brain than something that is like a short period of time, not a lot of physical movement um, and you're, and you're moving. So the, the, the more complex it is, uh, the more neurological fatigue you're going to have. And so you'll, you'll downregulate that. But for, for what you're saying, I would, I would include it in um, uh, the, the neural activation stage, like right before, right before training happens, I guarantee it'll, it'll uh, help with, the 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 stick movement and the other uh, dry land drills that you're doing because they'll be fired up like after after doing this you are you're fired up and that's why I said it's better than a cup of coffee because you're you're ready to go you're you're it, it excited all of those four domains of your brain and and now you're thinking right okay perfect yeah because we were putting it last but now I can see it should go first so if if it's a drill that's not brain taxing you can put it at the very end. So if there's something where you just want to beat these guys up, like you're going to do 10 cycles of this, like that's kind of like your, your metabolic training. Like, you know, like you'd be using battle ropes or you'd be doing something else. Like I'll use this system. Those are, that's why I use my all at once, a great metabolic one. I'll do, I put six, uh, I use eight pods. I use lots of pods. <laughs> I'll put my eight pods up. I'll click on it. And there's in, in, in a kind of a big space, they have to knock all those out, and then there's a there's like a five second window, uh, or sorry, rest. They'll all come on again. They ha they have to knock them out. That's fatiguing. And so, but I'll and and I'll have them do 10, 10 of those sessions done. But that was in order to train that uh, to that train their metabolic system, much like you would do kind of like a 
uh, an end of training session, um, uh, yeah. high rep, high speed workout. Okay, thanks. Yep. Thank you, Brent. Um, I think we're gonna have to unfortunately uh, finalize this and, and close up. Um, but uh, I'll let Michael say goodbye in a second, but I wanna thank you all A for coming. Uh, for listening to our wonderful coach Cummings and his uh, wonderful insights. Um, we had some great people here, uh, some that I don't know, would love to know. Uh, some great people uh, sending some lovely messages as well. So thank you all, uh, especially Stephen. I'm so happy to hear about your, 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 your son uh, back on the field, which is amazing. Uh, and to know that baseball had a part in that is also wonderful. Um, guys, feel free to reach out to us all um we love hearing your stories hearing your feedback um and also check out our blazeball academy uh, mc thank you so much that was really really wonderful yeah hey thanks thank you guys very much um uh i forgot the gentleman's name that uh that had cancer now learning to walk but man praying for you um let us know what we can do there's lots of great coaches on here too um, I would also, there's a woman on here named Nancy Timko. She's awesome. Um, and she deals a lot with Parkinson's and degenerative uh, issues. And so uh, she'd probably be a, a good resource for that. I want to uh, make a shout out to George Davies. He is one of our like top researchers. He's one of these guys that pulls everything in. There's Thomas right there. Good luck to you, brother. Speedy recovery, but uh, uh, Dr. Davies does a ton of research for us, and he's always he's the reason we can say what we can say because he's providing the evidence that supports this. And without guys like um, you know, Davies and some of the other universities doing the work, uh, we couldn't be evidence led, and we couldn't be credible. And so we are we're, we're valid and credible, and super appreciative of everybody, uh, all of you who who uh, are out there. And thank you for BlazePod for having me um, to 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 speak to such a wonderful group. Thanks, MC. Bye-bye uh, to everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all in the next webinar coming up. Ciao!